Hey, what's going on guys? My name is James, and today's video is going to be about Ableton's piano roll. So this is where you're going to be spending the majority of your time producing. Essentially, this is where all of your melodies are going to be written, all of your chords and harmonies, your bass lines, your drums, everything that you're going to be writing is in some way going to involve the piano roll, or uh, also kind of MIDI clips. Uh, center the piano roll is a way of writing a MIDI clip. Uh, or editing a MIDI clip, but um, right now we're just going to refer to it as the piano roll because it's actually a very good way of imagining how it works. So the reason that it's actually called the piano roll, and I didn't really make this connection until recently, is because if you think back to those old self-playing pianos, uh, you know, from the uh, you know few centuries back, uh, they used to have that basically that roll of paper that had either punches or bumps. Uh, etched into it that would, as they rolled through the piano, would then trigger different notes to be played on the piano, creating sound. So that was essentially the early version of the piano roll or a MIDI clip or something like that. It's something that contained note information that you were able to create yourself, and then that was translated into sound some way or another. So that's exactly what this tool does. So if we come into Ableton here, to open up the piano roll, essentially we need some MIDI clip to work with. So we have this blank MIDI track here. So we're going to create a MIDI clip. Again, just double click. So now this pops up with our piano roll. So this is where, like I said, all of your note information is going to be created and edited and everything like that. So uh, to give ourselves a little bit more room to edit, uh, the, you see this horizontal bar here. We're just going to click that and drag it up. So that's going to make this now full screen. So now we have a lot more space to uh, see things. And so now you'll notice that we have this black and white uh, checkered uh, bar on the side and that there's also kind of black and less or gray and less gray areas going kind of horizontally across. So this is due to, uh, essentially it's just a piano that's laid out horizontally. So that's going to uh, basically correspond to which note is going to be played. So horizontally across, if we have any note that falls on this horizontal line here, this is going to be middle C or C3. That three resembles what octave that note is taking place in. So the third octave is the center of the keyboard. The second octave is one lower than the center of the keyboard. Uh, C1 is essentially kind of where your left hand is been, like playing uh, the bass line, things like that. And then as you go up, C4 is an octave above, uh, you know, uh, to the right of the keyboard. And then C5, again, is another octave up. Uh, it's, you know, pretty easy to visualize it if you think of a piano. So again, with a piano, you have your white, key your white keys and your black keys. The black keys are your minor notes. Your white keys are, or um, your black keys are your sharps while your white keys are just your regular notes. And so that's essentially the easiest way that they're able to lay this out is just basically making it horizontally. So to kind of demonstrate how this works, uh, we can just make a very simple chord here. We can just make like a C major chord. So to create a note, all you have to do is just double click and that is going to create a note. And you're going to see that the note has a little label here and then it has a length. And that length is going to correspond to how long that note is held. So similarly, if you were to uh, kind of bounce your hand on a piano or press and hold on the piano, it's going to make a very different sound depending on how long that note is being held. So to edit that length, all you got to do is just kind of hover over the end and you're going to get this, that like end bracket symbol. And you're just going to click and you can just drag and it's going to drag and kind of snap to different increments uh, along this clip here. And that is going to adjust the length of that note. Now, if you need more space than this, like horizontally, if you need there to be like a longer section, uh, all you gotta do down here is you have these uh, little controls down here. Now we're not gonna get into all of these because some of them are a little bit more complicated. That's more for kind of the intermediate tutorials. But essentially we have the loop option, we have the position, the length, the start and end points of the loop. Then we have these other controls that allow us to do uh, different functions. But kind of where we're looking right now is this uh, bottom corner down here. So the position and the length. So right now one 
uh, essentially the length is one, which means that it's just one bar of music and a bar is four beats. So we're writing in four, four times. So there's four beats in each measure. So you can see here we have one, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. Essentially that's uh, a quarter note. So uh, from one to 1 1.2, so from this point to this point here is one quarter note. From this point to this point is a quarter note. And again, from this point to this point is another quarter note, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially one bar of music is if you think about sheet music, that is one bar of sheet music. That's going to be four quarter notes in four, four time. So this is, again, just one bar. So if we need more bars, uh, all you gotta do is just drag, click and drag this number up with your mouse. So just click and then drag up or down to change the length and you're going to see that it's going to now uh, increase that. So now we have all the way up to 10 bars, which uh, theoretically we really only need uh, this eight bar here, which actually goes all the way to nine. Um, so that's going to give us, if we go all the way to eight, now we have uh, a total of, what is that, 32 measures? So, or 32 beats, I should say. So we go from one, we have four quarter notes, then two to three, another four quarter notes, et cetera, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to eight. So now that's a, like a much larger chunk of uh, music. So now you can uh, arrange things a little bit differently rather than writing little individual clips. You can kind of have one big clip that contains uh, more information, essentially. So if you want to uh, duplicate a note in the piano roll, you can just press Control and D, and that is going to duplicate a note. So you can just keep pressing that. It's going to keep duplicating. You can click and drag to select multiple notes. So just click and drag from any area, and that's going to select multiple notes. And again, you can duplicate that by pr pressing Control D. Uh, Control Z will undo. Control Alt will allow you to essentially drag around the screen. So if you're zoomed in, which can be achieved by pressing the plus or minus key. So pressing plus, as you can see, is going to zoom in on one section and pressing the minus is then going to uh, zoom out. So if you're zoomed in and you wanna kind of navigate really quickly, pressing control alt at the same time will bring up this hand. And you can kind of drag this hand around and uh, navigate around your piano roll easier so you can uh, move quickly between different areas. Uh, and if you need to essentially uh, create a bunch of different versions of the same note, all you gotta do is you can select those notes, hold down the control key, and then click and drag those notes. And you're gonna see it's gonna create a duplicate copy. So now we can make a chord going like this. So now we have this chord uh, by simply like, again, just pressing control and just dragging notes will allow you to uh, move that around. So control Z to undo. And then if you need to just move notes, it's very simple. Just click and drag and just drag them around. Um, so yeah, you can also do functions to multiple notes at the same time here. So I have all these notes selected. I can select the end and that's going to perform the same function to all of those notes that you have selected. If you want to select specific notes, similar to like Windows Explorer, if you just press control, and uh, select multiple notes, or uh, is it shift? Yes, if you hold down shift and you select multiple notes, then again, you can do the same uh, function there once you have multiple notes selected. And so you can kind of look around here and see what's going on. So right now we're writing right around middle C if we wanted to go lower. Uh, what you can do to uh, move around vertically, so you can either just scroll with your wheel or you can click and drag on the side here, on that left side, you'll see where that magnifying glass comes up. Just click and drag and up and down is going to be like scrolling up and down. But if you move left or right, it's actually going to kind of compress everything. So if you look at this here, it's going to compress it so that if you have a lot going on in various uh, vertical sections of the piano roll, it's going to allow you to see more information at the same time. And then uh, you can find out what particular area you want to edit, you can click around there and then drag to the, uh, what is that, to the right to zoom in on that specific area. And then you can zoom back out and then, you know, move around and then zoom in, zoom out, and stuff like that. So um, it's a very, very functional area to be writing. So you can see that it's subdivided also into this grid with these vertical lines. If you need a more precise grid, you can right click 
um, you can right click anywhere and you see this fixed grid area you can select uh, basically different uh, grid styles so if you need a little bit more of a precise grid you can do the 132nd grid so there's uh, twice as many vertical columns where it's going to be snapping to but also if you want to edit a note but you don't want to snap to the grid if you just hold down uh, control uh, let's see or no it is alt if you hold down alt you can drag it to any length and it's going to ignore any of that clipping and it's just going to uh, make it the exact length that you drag it out to be and then if you let go of alt before placing the note it's going to revert back to clipping so make sure to let go of the mouse before letting go of alt just something to kind of keep in mind it's a very useful production tip if you're doing something that's a little bit more not really tempo based like it has a little more of a groove to it so it's not stuck to that four four time um, but essentially that's kind of the basics of the piano roll um, if you do want to edit uh, the loop so what exactly the area that's going to be looped every time that it plays through you can uh, if you zoom out you see this bar up at the top so if you drag this little uh, arrow to the left or to the right that's going to change where the loop starts so if you want to just loop these last two uh, vertical bars here you can move it all the way over here and it's going to just disregard everything off to the left it's just going to start here and it is going to play from there over to the right once it gets to the right it's going to come back and then start at seven again go to nine and then come back to seven etc but if you want to make the end of the loop come the other way similarly you select this arrow and you drag it over to wherever you want it to loop so now right now it's only going to loop this first bar it's going to disregard all of this information here um, there is some other tools down here that again we're going to be talking about later um, this is velocity so essentially like how hard a note is being hit um, so we're going to talk about that another time because that's a little bit more um, complicated but also very useful to kind of help with uh, making something sound a little bit more real but also uh, kind of making instead of having the same exact sound you can kind of switch it up a little bit and change some of the characteristics of the note using that velocity but again we're going to get into that in a different video so I'll link that I believe up here if I'm not mistaken if not it's up here um, so once that comes out you can click that and it should take you right to that video but uh, that's really it for the piano roll just kind of a basic overview of the functions you know I'm not really doing any sort of theory like how chords should be made or something like that uh, essentially this is just the functions of the piano roll I might possibly do a theory based course later on but I don't feel like right now I have the knowledge or the capability to teach that I do know how to uh, you know write decent chords and things like that but I don't believe I have the knowledge to teach that yet so that will be coming possibly at a later time, but for the time being, if you're interested, there's musictheory.net, there's uh, teoria.com, which helps you with learning chords and things like that, um, and also melodic, uh, you know, dictation and reading sheet music and things like that. Very useful website. Um, and I'll also link a few videos below that uh, I feel definitely helped me when I was learning. But so that's kind of an introduction to the piano roll, uh, which will kind of help you get the ball rolling in Ableton Live. If you guys have any questions, obviously leave them in the comments below. I'm always, uh, you know, as you've seen with other videos, I am always responding to comments the second that they come in. So if you have any questions, don't be afraid to post them below. Um, I'll try my best to answer that. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I should be having another video out actually relatively soon. Um, don't know exactly what it's going to be on yet, but uh, like I said, it should be out within the next week. So catch you guys there. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.